Hey y'all, it's my review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 14 Reunion, Part 3. Let's just get this over with because they playing in our face right now, wasting our time. This could have been a two-part reunion. I was on my phone the entire time. Child, Andy did not say it's the dramatic conclusion. <laughs> Thank God there's a conclusion and an end. Andy Coney his ass whooped for this as well as last week's episode of Housewives of Beverly Hills. All right, so we left off on the sissy assistant. I'm not sure why they went back so far because we definitely saw Andy hang up on him. All that FaceTime proved was that Sissy was looking for the spotlight. He played both of them like fools. I do understand Sheree's point though. Like how can Drew be mad at Sheree for spreading the rumor when she did the same thing with her assistant about Sheree? So now they're going back and forth. We see the split screen and apparently Drew isn't paying people either. I'm not shocked because she's a scammer just like Sheree. And now Drew's saying she got cash apps from people wanting to send her Sheree's sex tapes. <laughs> Lord, could you imagine a charade sex tape? My eyes would burn out my skull. I don't want that image in my head. So Sheree gets asked, don't you think it's a little hypocritical to say that Candy shouldn't be mad when people call her a hoe because she hears it all the time when you get mad when people say you don't pay even though you hear it all the time? And here she go lying again. I don't understand. I, I just think we need new content. Shut up. Just, just shut up. I'm tired of the lies. So then Drew interjects and talks about the 50% that Sheree owes her for the birthday party she threw, I think Kenya and Marlo. And then Sheree's like, well, it's not my fault that you went overboard so you can try and buy friends. <laughs> That was a little funny. <laughs> Y'all, I'm tired of the charade and Drew back and forth because they're both clowns. So now we're on the subject of Futon doing a background check on Drew's husband. I mean, it, that is kind of going too far as a friend of. And Drew has a point. Sheree encouraged that. Like, she did not denounce it. She was just hee-hee-heeing in the background. Futon was doing her dirty work. I want to fast forward so bad, but I got to have something to review. It's like, Sonya can't get a word in. Drew keeps talking, keeps lying. Marlo, I mean, ugh, I, I don't wanna hear anything else from Marlo because we heard from her the first two parts about her sob story. Candy's quiet as a mouse. Kenya just chilling, collecting her check. And Sheree keeps lying and giving us nothing. All right, so they end their segment on them just not being friends with each other and just coexisting. Can't wait for season 15. So we get a little fourth wall break as Leah's about to leave the stage. Drew and Sheree are still going at it about the assistant. And he's just sitting back on his phone looking annoyed by them going at it just like we are. And saying, ladies, don't you think this guy is playing the both of you? Like, like, can't they see that? Anyway, we see the husbands approaching the venue. And I'm guessing that's the next segment where Andy brings them out. It really sucks. Ralph looks this good, but he ain't shit inward. We see the husbands talking backstage and they do not look thrilled to be a part of this reunion. I'm not thrilled to watch it. So the husbands approach the stage and I gotta admit, Ross and Ralph, they both look fine in their white suits. Todd, Todd is there. Black people just look good in white. So Ross is the first house husband in the hot seat. And you know, talking about uh, parenting with Sonya. And then we get to the Jamaica trip where he like, don't F with my wife. He's saying that he just wanted to de-escalate the situation and he didn't appreciate them both coming at his wife at the same time. Andy then asked Ross his opinion on Kenya calling him aggressive. He says he understood it, but he still thought it wasn't the right thing to say. And I agree. And then Kenya's now backpedaling a bit, saying that she didn't think Ross would do anything to them. And she actually admires that he stood up for his wife. Okay. So here we go on Candy's reel along with Todd because that was her storyline. You know, Candy and Todd, what business are they doing this season? Like next season, they already have it in place. Like um, the Broadway play with um, Samuel L. Jackson and um, Denzel Washington's son. I think his name is John Washington. I don't know. Whatever. But she has a new business venture every season. And I ain't mad at it though. It's just... What else is going on? 
So now we're talking about the vibrating panty gate and how, you know, people thought it was inappropriate, but I think they're just laughing it all off. Marlo is asked, why do you have so much to say about everyone's relationships, but you never disclose anything about your situationships? She says that she thinks that every man cheats, but she does admit that it wasn't her place and she apologizes to Todd. But you know, Marlo's apologies are worth less than nothing. So Todd is still in the hot seat and Andy's asking him, what does he think about, you know, the ladies saying that the streets is talking, with him possibly being involved in infidelity. Look, Todd ain't cheating on Candy. If he knows what's good for him, Candy would take his ass to the cleaners. Like she would drop his ass immediately. Like, he's not going anywhere. Like, Candy is his cash cow. Cash cow candy. Candy the cash cow. Now, here's the question that I'm more so interested in being asked to Todd. It's about his daughter and how he's forcing her to struggle while she sees her stepsister, Riley, just living it up. You know, like, without a care in the world, her mom spoils her. And he actually doubles down on it. He says that they're from the Bronx. And the way he operated when he grew up, like that struggle, she's going to appreciate it. You are dumb. You, you really are dumb. Like you have the means to give your child a better life and work easier. And you're going to make her struggle? Like, you know Todd making money. You, you know he is. And it's infuriating to know that. I, I feel bad for his daughter. I really do. So now Candy's talking about her new play and how she wants the e guy, And I really do think she can get a Tony from the place she invested in because the play looks good. Now, if anybody in the chat has a plug for Candy's play that she's producing, look, hit me up. I wouldn't mind going. So now we're on the topic of the will and the trust conversation that they both had in front of their daughters. And if Candy dies first, she really don't trust Todd with the money. And Candy now explains her viewpoint on why she sees it that way. She says that, um, I think she says her grandmother or her great-grandmother passed uh, her grandfather got remarried when he died, so then his spouse took all the money. My thing is, it is what it is, though. I mean, that's a coincidence of life. I'm sure her grandfather's new wife didn't kill him or something like that to get the money. That's just how things worked out. But on the other hand, I do see Candy just worried about her fortune because she wants to make sure she has generational wealth and make sure that it goes on to her immediate family. I get that, but it's just something weird to have on your mind constantly, you know? All right, so Ralph is about to get in the hot seat. So we see a reel of him and Drew from their time tumultuous relationship, uh, the drop it with Drew scam, the assistant situation as well, offering Ralph massages, and then Ralph having a whole book deal behind Drew's back. Okay, is it just me or is Ralph, like he's saying some rehearsed line, he practiced for these questions. I can see him and Drew going over lines before the reunion. I don't believe it. I'm not buying it. So they put a bow in the assistant situation. Now we're talking about when people came at Ralph. So the next question is actually for the whole group. It's asking, why did nobody have a problem when Kenya came after Ralph, but when Marlo came after Ralph in Jamaica, it was a problem. I don't know. I I'm guessing those two arguments were similar, but Marlo, she was being a hypocrite. Kenya was just calling Ralph out because Ralph wasn't shit. So I can see that. Like, Marlo, she was definitely like, girl, you just kicked your kids out. You checking somebody else about another kid? So yeah, I can see the differences. Another question to the group, why is everyone coming so hard for Drew? Because Drew is fake. She's phony. She's a scammer. She lies. She puts 20 on 10 all the time. And she's annoying. And I don't want her on the show anymore, but... She's coming back for a third season. I just don't know why. They're trying to call Kenya and Candy out for coming for Drew sometimes, but it's mostly because she's a contradicting queen. That's why. Like, she keeps contradicting herself. And she blatantly lied about her business. Like, this isn't her business. She is the face of someone else's business. You are a brand ambassador, sweetie. It's not your business. I feel like I'm on the island, though, because a lot of y'all, y'all love Drew. I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I really need her to stop saying that dropping with Drew was about health and wellness when she kept marketing lose 25 pounds in two weeks. That was her focal point. And we found out that it was all a lie. It was all a lie, y'all. It was all a lie. 
So as they continue talking about dropping with Drew, um, they bring up Sheree's comment about her looking like a busted can of biscuits. That was a little savage, you know, a little harsh. I was just laughing at the audacity that someone would compare somebody to a busted can of biscuits. And not Andy seriously asking Sheree, is she a busted can of biscuits? <laughs> <laughs> so as Sheree is trying to find a lie and an excuse to answer the question about why she used that verbiage, Drew stands up and shows her body, body. I mean, it looked like she got some work done in addition to wearing some uh, Spanx. But good for her. I mean, Drew does look good. That dress, though? Awful. Then Drew tells everybody that I'm not going to give a specific number of what I lost, but it was between 15 and 20 pounds. Girl, sit your ass down. I'm just tired of her lies. I really am. Like, it is a lie-off on this reunion between Marlo, Sheree, and Drew. I'm really annoyed right now that I can't see the timestamps on my DVR, so I don't know how much time I have left, but I really want this reunion to be over. So now Andy's asking Ralph, what does he think about the comments Sheree said about him throughout the season, particularly the rumor that he was gay? He said he 100% doesn't appreciate it. She knows for a fact he isn't gay. Sheree said, well, I don't know for a fact. I don't think you're gay, but I don't know for a fact. That is shades, Sheree, but... Again, this is Sheree using gay as an insult towards another house husband. She has done this before, season after season. I think she said this about um, Croy, Apollo, Ralph, um, Kim Fields' husband. Like, I really don't like that. I mean, it's a running theme in Atlanta, and Sheree, she still holds on to that. Ralph is giving it to Sheree, though. I mean, Ralph really prepared for this reunion. I think more than his wife. I'm a little impressed. A, a little bit. A little bit. OP definitely called out Sheree. I don't know why Sheree is using gay as a slur to hurt me. <laughs> Get a Ralph? Wow. Now we have a split screen between Ralph and Sheree. They are going back and forth. Sheree, I mean, she don't really have a leg to stand on. Kind of Ralph is in the right. <laughs> he ain't had nothing to do with it. She used him as collateral against Drew. Ooh, and Ralph got Sheree a little pressed right now in this little mini argument. We can see the veins, like, coming out her neck. Like, in season two, when she told that guy, who's gonna check me, boo? Ooh, I wish you would. I wish you would. <laughs> I haven't seen Classic Atlanta in a long time. I need to revisit that. So as Andy's trying to move on, Drew calls Sheree weird and then tells her she needs to focus on she by, she not done yet still. <laughs> Okay, Drew. And then Sheree's like, you're weird. And she's like, drop it with who? Drop it with who? Drop it with who? Like they go back and forth. Drop it with who? Drop it with who? <laughs> the other ladies are over it, kind of like how I am. Andy looked like he got a kick out of Drew saying, she by, she not done yet still. <laughs> that was kind of funny though. We finally move on and we're still on Drew and Ralph and they're annoying relationship. I will say, even though he's doing all the right things, just like his wife, it's all an act. So now we get to Ralph's book deal. He definitely did not tell his wife that he was shopping for a book. Ralph says that Drew knew about it, but she interrupts him and says, oh, no, no, no. Like, you told me you got the book deal, but I didn't know you were shopping for one. So yeah, that is a difference. And you're shopping on a book deal involving her son. Like, how you don't, how she don't know that? As Ralph is trying to explain himself as well as the book, he says there's three reasons a father should adopt another man's child. He says two reasons and then he gets tripped up. Like it's a little embarrassing because a lot of time goes by as he's trying to think of the third one. I'm like, sir, the book is finished. How you don't know this? And then Ralph is saying that he's going on tour for this book and he's bringing along the other men on stage, uh, Ross and Todd. Todd jokes that the first stop is in Tampa and everybody laughs. Todd has just been the comedian on this reunion, huh? I'm glad Drew and Ralph got to a place where they can laugh about the Tampa trip, even though she still don't know where he was. Whew, all right, I can actually see the timestamp, y'all. We are at the 44 minute mark. I am ready for this to be over. So we're finally off Drew and Ralph and we're back with Candy and Todd again, but this time with Marlo and their big blow up in Jamaica. The first question is from Marlo saying, do you really think Candy doesn't do much for the community? Of course she backtracks and apologizes to Candy for that. But again, 
Her apologies mean jack shit. And by the look on Candy's face when she apologized, that's true. Next question is from Marlo and Sheree saying that how could they say Candy isn't a good friend when they aren't a good friend to Candy? Sheree, lying still, well, I, I, I just said, well, you know, well, Candy knew some things that, that I didn't. And then Candy comes back right quick. She's like, well, remember when Kim told you that I wanted to lick her box? You didn't give me a heads up. When Sheree hears this, all she can say is, and vice versa. And they just move on. Tyler gets a messy question asking him what did he think when Marla said that he was below Candy's tax bracket. And Todd has a great response to this. He says everyone in this room is below Candy's tax bracket. I hear that. Well, Andy Cohen, I already looked it up too. Um, allegedly, his net worth is 50 million and Candy's is 30. So yeah, they're, they're kind of in the same tax bracket. Everyone else? Not so much. So we finally get to the Marlo, Candy, and Todd argument. Andy asks her, why did you bring Todd into it? She backtracks and said, I shouldn't have brought Todd into it, and I apologize for that. Oh, Lord. Is she going to stand firm on anything she did this season? I agree with some people said on Twitter about producers helping Marlo out and making her likable again, having her apologize, having to say her sob story so she can keep her peach next season so it won't look like a waste on their part. Even though looking at it now, I think the decision to make Marlo a housewife was a mistake, and I think producers realize that too. So after apologizing for that, Marlo does ask Todd, well, who did I pay to get into this circle? I think Todd was waiting on her to ask him that. Look, <laughs> some of these guys definitely rehearse for this reunion because it is apparent. Ooh, okay, Todd, in your earlier thirsty years. Now, Marlo feels all this shade. Now she's trying to backtrack. Now, Todd, I'm about to go back and forth with a man, with the man. Everybody on the cast is saying, well, you asked him. Andy's like, Todd, continue. And Todd is laying it all out. Come to find out Marlo paid for the Africa trip in season four. She paid all her expenses just to be around the ladies. Production did not cover her to go on the cash trip. Ooh, and Andy's confirming all of it. He's like, oh, well, she, she did pay. <laughs> She can't backtrack out of this one, but she is saying, oh, did I pay for my room? Did I pay for this? And he's like, well, you paid for your ticket. Ty got her together. Look, Ty got Marlo together and Ralph got Sheree together. Look at that. So now we're getting to the worldwide comment where Marlo said that Candy isn't worldwide. So she's trying to clarify. She does say that Candy is worldwide, but she gives the example in some places if we both go to, say, Paris or London, like I'm going to in four days. Uh, she says, well, she can't get into the places I can get into. And then the rest of the cast is like, oh, wow, really? Really, Marlo? Now, I thought about it and I was like, well, Marlo does have some pull in fashion and higher places. Maybe, maybe, I, I can kind of see it. Like, I I'm not gonna be too biased, but I do think though Candy can buy her way in to anywhere Marlo can be. Cause she does know like the president of Fendi personally. I'm guessing she's discussing some of her connections that Candy don't have because she does say that Candy has, you know, hip hop and music connections. She says she has other connections. So, hey, I I'm trying to see both sides of this. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Just from hearing this back and forth, I think production is so messy. I think season 15, the cash trip is going to be in London or Paris. You heard it here first. I'm calling it now because I'm a petty person, so I'm going to predict petty behavior on production. Watch the next cash trip be Paris or London. So lastly, we're talking about the truce between Marlo and Candy over a Jamaican bucket of KFC. Candy's saying that it wasn't just about the chicken. Okay, Candy. She says that Todd forgave Marlo, so why would she still be mad at her? Because the only reason she was mad at her, because she came after her husband. So that made it easier to accept the chicken. So after that, Andy dismisses the husband from the stage, and he's about to wrap up this horrible reunion. Ugh, and here we go with the let's go around the room and say what you learned this season, say something positive bullshit. I don't care. I, I kind of want to fast forward, y'all. Sonya, blah, blah, blah. Drew, blah, 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 blah. Marlo, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to think before I speak. Girl, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> No, you're not. Producers clearly use this reunion as a redemption for Marlo to bring her back next season. 
Kenya, I love you this season, but blah, 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 blah. Next. Candy keeps it short and sweet and says, bitch, I'm worldwide. Thank you, Candy, for keeping it brief. Sheree, blah, blah, blah. I'm an OG. This is a sisterhood. Lies. And then she starts talking about she by Sheree. And the big surprise at the end is she got she by Sheree merchandise for all the ladies as well as Andy. Andy then puts the hoodie on that Sheree gave him, followed by Sheree saying that the website should be available, just not the pieces that you saw on the show. And that is where this awful reunion ends. It definitely should have been two parts. I think I would have enjoyed it more. Um, overall, I would give the reunion a... I would give the reunion as well as this season a C-. minus. There were moments, but it was satisfactory. Almost less than satisfactory. I found out that all the ladies are coming back. And I'm like, well... The only good issue about it is they're not trading out ladies again for them to form new friendships. So at least maybe next season they could try to pretend like they like each other. They definitely need to add another cast member, particularly Portia. I don't know why people keep asking for Nini. Nini has burned that bridge. And when Nini was on the show, she was miserable. I also don't know why Kim Zolciak's name is being brought up. I don't know why that raccoon Karamo went on Watch What Happens Live asking for Kim Zolciak back. Girl, stick to your talk show that you're going to have for one season and one season only. But anyway, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the reunion and the season as a whole. I'll be back for season 15, but right now I'm looking forward to Potomac. That's coming back in two weeks. With that, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all for my Married to Medicine review. Bye!